<laughs> so welcome everybody. We're excited to see you and we're happy that you're here. Um, welcome to the Master Gardener program. You might have been waiting to do this for years or you might have just got that great idea this year. So um, whatever the case is, we're happy you're here. So um, our program is a two county program and um, it's Milwaukee and Waukesha County, so you've got this uh, 13 weeks of classes, 14 weeks, you're going to have two different teachers. One is me, and I'm Ian Weed, and I'm with Waukesha County UW Extension. And I'm Sharon Morrissey, and I'm with the Milwaukee County UW Extension. And I'll be doing all the classes at Burner, the Milwaukee site, and then Ian and I can split up the ones here in Waukesha. So I'm looking forward to working with all of you. <coughs> <clears throat> so let's start with um, the handout packet for today. So um, today you received the presentation printout. Um, it doesn't have every slide that you're going to see on the screen, but it's going to have most of the slides. And so it's white. The other um, item that you have in your packet is called uh, at a glance, it's labeled, and it's yellow, I think. And and that basically covers everything also that's on it today, uh, that we're covering today. And it's kind of a great go-to sheet that you can go to down the road, like, what, where did she say again about that? You can always go to that. It really just kind of captures just a lot of quick information about the programs. We call it at a glance. And then you received, um, a little packet of forms to complete. There's three forms. Um, a behavior expectations agreement, Sharon's holding it up. The personal data sheet, and we hope that you fill that out and turn it in, and then the participant profile sheet. So all three are real important to us for this program. You can fill it out any time during the program. Break time is fine. There's a box over on the table that says drop off forms, you just put them in the box. So um, at that point we'll be pulling off some of the different things and putting it in piles or whatever. So we need to have that stuff returned today. It's really hard if you put it someplace then we'll never track it down. So um, any questions about that particular packet? So um, there are holes in those and you can put them in your binder, your weekly binder that you received under week one. So that would be an easy place to put it. You also got in that thing, in that packet, the green, <laughs> the green handouts. So there are some yellow handouts. It's the Master Gardener newsletter that comes out every other month. And this, you, you have now the most recent edition of the newsletter. So be sure to read it. It's called Good Earth News. Some, are, some have it yellow, some have it green printed. And you can, uh, and then there's also another handout on invasive plants, and that was a late printing that we did, and that needs to go into your, uh, is it week, 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 seven? week seven? So put it in your week seven um, section. So I'll just let you to take a minute to do that. Or any place under section 7 that I <laughs> So there's some chairs at, at like this table, there's one here if you want it. Agenda. 
So um, we're going to talk a little bit about what, what UW Extension is. Some of you may or, not, may or not be familiar with who we are. We're going to talk a little bit about the Master Gardener Volunteer Program. We're going to talk about the Level 1 Training Course and other educational programs. We're going to talk about volunteer service, <coughs> certification, and keeping it up with it all. And we, our goal is so that you don't, our goal is to end this before your eyes glaze over. So we have modified from previous years to try to scale it back because we know you can just absorb just so much on the first night. So, so UW Extension, we're going to start with this, what is UW Extension? We are the 15th campus of the UW system. So just like UW-Madison is a campus, Whitewater is a campus, Cooperative Extension is a campus, UW Extension, but we're located in all 72 counties to meet the needs of our counties. And so we have your non-traditional education programs, programs that normally you don't get credit for. Well, uh, the Master Gardener program is one. You may have heard of the 4-H program. We have nutrition education. We have some parenting and family living programs. Many of the counties have agriculture agents, horticulture, Sharon and I. So um, we do a lot of different kind of programs, but we're UW Extension. So now you know who we are. We can think of us as like a county education department. And so, um, and each county has a little bit of different things. So not every county does the same thing. So like I said, we have agriculture, youth development and 4-H, community development, natural resources, family, living, and nutrition. So what is the Master Gardener program? And you may have had a vision of what you thought it might be. You may know what's spot on, or you may like say at the end of this, I had no idea that I was getting into this. But it's an education, um, educational volunteer training program of, the, of cooperative extension nationwide. And it trains individuals in the use of university-based <laughs> research information and resources. So whatever you share, whatever you do, we're always using university-based resources. Um, you, you may assist extension staff in uh, delivering educational programs where they live, where they work, where they play, and, when they, and where they garden. So if you think back, if you can go back to the 70s, and some of you might have a really easy way of doing it, some of you might not remember the 70s, and some of you may have been born in the 70s, but it started in Seattle in 1972, and now it's throughout the United States and Canada. In Wisconsin, it started in 1977 in Milwaukee, in, uh, and in Milwaukee and Waukesha County, it started in 1977, and today it's throughout Wisconsin. Uh, it's, you could, pretty much say it's in almost in every county. Some counties, you know, join up with another county to offer the program, but it's throughout the, the state. And our volunteers truly make a difference. As you can see from this slide, um, they put a value on the amount of volunteer work that the Master Gardeners do, and they put a value at $4.5 million just in the volunteer hours alone. They log 200 and th over 203,000 volunteer hours in the state of Wisconsin with Master Gardeners. So it's pretty cool. Um, and in our county, um, we have, there were five, actually in the, within the state, there were 596 new Master Gardeners trained in, in 2016. So if you are, um, if you've never been to the State Master Gardener website, here is the link. By the way, there's a spot up here if you can't see in your spot. Okay. Thank you. So in Waukesha and Milwaukee County, we're the Southeast Wisconsin Master Gardeners. And you can see that the South and the East are pushed together and there's a capital S and an E. That's intentional, it's not a typo. And they call themselves SEWMGs. So you'll hear that term quite a bit as you get farther, more involved in the program. Where the low, our, this is our local Master Gardener Association, it's your association. Milwaukee and Waukesha County, and there's approximately 650 members, Master Gardeners. Lots and lots of people. And if you've never been to our website, this is the link to our website. Now the state also has a Wisconsin Master Gardener Association that's separate from the Wisconsin State Master Gardener Program. There's a state program that runs the Master Gardener Program 
put together training materials. Then we have local associations, and then we have a state association, and that's what this is called, the Wisconsin Master Gardener Association, and they call that WIMGA. And our group has a rep at, with WIMGA. His name is John Hahn. He's been a rep for, for us for a long time. So he goes to state association meetings, comes back to our meeting, reports back, and lets us know what's going on. Sometimes he'll put articles in the newsletter. Sometimes he'll send out an email. Sometimes he just reports it at the monthly meetings. And here is the state Master Gardener website. So congratulations, you are now a member of both. So you remember you paid $10 in dues when you paid that $60 check? $10 of it was for dues, $5 went to the Southeast Wisconsin Master Gardeners, and $5 went to the State uh, Wisconsin Master Gardener Association. So don't pay again now until November of 2018. So right now they're starting to send emails out to our Master Gardener uh, email list, they're and reminding people, like, don't forget it's time to pay your dues, it's time to pay your dues. Once you start getting emails through that list, don't pay, you're already paid up for next year, okay? So, any questions <coughs> this, so, this far? Anybody? Okay. So, the Wisconsin Master Gardener program basically has three components. The first one, we're going to talk a little bit about your records. Second one, about training. And then we're also going to talk about volunteer service. Hopefully, we'll get a lot of your questions answered. So the first one is about your records. Uh, when you're a Master Gardener, you have to have some records on file. You're going to have the three that you turned in today, which is the behavioral expectations, the pro personal data sheet, and the participant profile. So OK, if you've already turned them in, those three are done. You recall when you um, turned in your packet, your registration materials, you were told that you're going to have a criminal background check. You'll be getting instructions about that in, uh, shortly. And then down the way, you'll be getting instructions about taking a mandatory reporter of child abuse and neglect training. Um, and you have to go through the training and get a little certificate. It's a little online pr program. Don't get stressed about it, but because we're a state organization, we have to have people participate in that in that training. If, you've, if you're already a teacher, you've taken it through a church or whatever, those things count. So as long as you have a certificate to show that you've completed that training, that will be fine. But in the meantime, uh, just hold tight and we'll, down the road we're going to explain to you how to access this online module and complete that training. It's very simple to do. You might say, well, I'm not going to be working with kids. But we never know who's going to be working with kids. Or you may think you're not, and then all of a sudden you volunteer at some event, and there's all these kids. So we have to have everybody covered. The next thing we're going to talk about is training. So um, level one is what you're signed up for. It's the only required training course in the program. So today is orientation and then that's going to be followed by 12 sessions. And every week there's going to be a different topic covered. So um, next week uh, we're going to be talking about gardening practices. Another week we're going to have, um, you know, soils and so far. Uh, Sharon will be up here giving presentations. I'll be up here giving presentations and, and occasionally we'll also we have I think four or five state specialist from Madison who's going to come in and talk about specific topics. So if you've ever listened to PJ Leash on public radio, he used to, he, you took the place of Fred, uh, Phil Pelletieri, if you remember those names. He's going to be here to talk about insects. So we have different people coming in. It's going to be, most people really enjoy the guest speakers. Sharon and I always feel like <laughs> people always say, we love the guest speakers. And we're like, but what about us? So uh, anyway, it should be fun. So level one training classes. Um, you're going to have to take a final exam at the end of the program, but don't stress. Uh, you have to get a 70% or better. It's take home, open book, open note, use the internet. You should be able to do it. Um, the whole point of that is, and we'll explain that later, we don't expect you or want you to know everything. We just want you to know where to look to get the answer, and that's the whole key. You're never going to know everything, and there's always new stuff coming up. And the whole key is, is learning about what resources are reputable and good sources and which ones aren't. So other training is available. 
you're eligible to do many of it starting you know tomorrow if there's something that comes up there's continuing education first of all we have level two training that's held mm -hmm. the spring of every year it's held usually for four weeks in a row um, but it's been held in the evening on a specific topic so maybe it'll be trees and shrubs or maybe it'll be um, flowers or it could be um, you know native plantings, things like that. It, they, we usually open it up to all our, our, our other master gardeners first, and then if we have open slots, we say, hey, new trainees, you're eligible to participate. But if, if the class fills up really fast, uh, then you're not able to take it. So you have to just watch for the email. There are level three trainings, and often you don't even, we never even mention them as level three, but we consider those like one day trainings. Sharon and I do a pruning workshop in, the, in usually March. Um, or early April every year where we pick a couple locations in Milwaukee and Waukesha County and we have a half day workshop where you have half the class we're inside learning about pruning the other half the class is we go outside and we actually practice pruning trees and shrubs it's really a great hands-on deal that would be considered like a level through three it's just a one-day shot it's always open to new uh, new trainees to take it's a lot of fun people really feel like they get a lot of practical and hands-on you know uh, training, they're like, okay, I can do this now. So, and then most of the, a lot of them who are people who are married run home and tell their spouses how they did it wrong. So, <laughs> uh, there's other programs that Master Gardeners run. So, Master Gardeners also offer the Southeast Wisconsin Master Gardeners have a continuing ed program where they have programs. They have one tonight while you're sitting here on weeds. That the next, in October they have another one. So you're going to be able to. Uh, they'll send out an email saying time to register for this. Uh, trade in on this education class and um, and anybody's welcome to sign up uh, you have to just go online and register so that they have enough seats for everybody and that's those are free and um, you consider that continuing education they have bus trips sometimes and tours that you're welcome to, to take participate in so lots of that but we'll go into that more later but lots of opportunities for more education and then volunteer service, minimum of 24 hours on approved activities required every year. So our year runs um, September 15th to September, uh, August, September 1st to August 29th. So <clears throat> this is the year it's starting just when you're coming on board. And um, we're gonna talk more about volunteer hours later today, uh, but you can start volunteering now. So we'll explain that in a little bit. So some people say, when am I going to be a certified master gardener? I've heard about being a certified master gardener. What does it mean? How do I get there? So to become a certified master gardener, you complete the program requirements, which are you uh, you have all your records complete and on file. Remember we talked a little bit about the records. You pass the final exam, and you report a minimum of 24 hours of volunteer service. And most people do more than 24 because what ends up happening is they find something that they like to do, and voila, it doesn't seem like a lot, and they just volunteer and have fun. Um, all that needs to be done by September 1st. And then you are notified in November of 2018 that yes, you in fact are certified, and then you're awarded a gift, a certificate of completion and a permanent SEW name tag, which is just everybody loves it. So. Um, you get that and then you're uh, officially a, um, a certified master gardener. At that time, your $50 service deposit is refunded. Remember you sent a check for $60, $10 were for dues, $50 service deposit. She'll get that in November after everything's processed. So then to recertify every year, what do you need to do? You need to, once again, 24 hours of volunteer service, and then you've got to do 10 hours of continuing education because we want you to continually keep on learning. So I told you all those different ways you can get hours. So if you do a little bit of this and a little bit of that before you know it, you have way more than 10 hours. So um, we're going to talk more about that later too. So you don't need to have any continuing education this first year because you're getting 36 hours of training. So don't feel like, how am I going to get continuing ed? You don't have to worry about it. But you might end up doing it, and if you do, record it. But you're set, you're good to go till next September. Okay? And then people say, well, what, what actually counts for continuing ed? We have a whole continuing ed education policy on our website. Um, 
And it's basically anything that's offered by UW Extension or by the state organ, a state Wisconsin Master Gardener Organization, WIMGA, uh, our Southeast Wisconsin Master Gardener Group, another Master Gardener Group, like let's say, you know, uh, Ozaki County has a little session. Yeah, that counts. Um, state government agencies, if the DNR puts on something, yes, it counts. Um, local environmental groups. Um, you know, Burner, Schlitz Audubon, Rexer, things like that. But I mean, if you go to Rexer, if it's all about birds, yeah, it's not gonna really count, but it's something about guarding is. So I mean, I, you know what I mean? Just because it's at Rexer doesn't mean everything counts. If it's attracting birds to your yard through landscape plants, well, yeah, that would be a fit. So we don't have to approve them. You use your own judgment. We are always here to ask, answer questions, but it's just like we figure most people can figure it out. Sometimes it's questionable and like, I'm just not sure. And Sharon and I get those calls and it's not a problem. So you report all your continuing education hours, even this year and in other years all the time. So even if you get up to 10, you're like, wow, I got to 10 next year. And you do 10 more, make sure you record 10 more. Cause we, we like to pride ourselves that our master gardeners continually get their education and, and then some. So um, it's very cool. So, any questions so far? Okay, then Sharon's going to take over. Oh, there was a hand. Oh, there was a hand. Where was the hand? Right here. Will we learn anything about pruning in this, this master gardeners one? No, no. <laughs> but there's a whole. In your manual on trees and shrubs and stuff, they do talk about it. And are there pruning? Uh, are there fact sheets? <clears throat> there are some fact sheets. There are some fact sheets on pruning, probably in your in your binder, and we can direct you to them if you're not not able to find them. But we have there's just so much we can cover. So yeah. Any any other questions? Yes. Everything's online and. Uh, down in a in a week or down the road, Sharon. You don't report it online, though. You have to download. Yeah, you have to download a document. Sheet, keep the time sheet on your okay. And then you save it on your. It's a, it's it's you can fill the document. It's a fillable document that you save on your computer, and then when it's time to turn it in, you print it off, and then you mail it to us. Then we'll explain that at another time. Also, if you start volunteering between now and when we talk about it, just write it in a notebook, and then. You can always fill it in later. Oh, cool. Yes. What happens if you know you're going to miss a class? If you're going to miss a class, it's not a problem. And we're going to explain that in a little bit. Can we go to the other one? No, you cannot. <laughs> and I was, it's going to happen. I'm going to just, I'll just tell you why right now. When you miss a class, the people who check you in, if there's an extra handout, they have a paper clip with your name on it that you're going to get that handout. So we have a certain number of handouts for this class, and so does the other one. So if you go to that class, you won't be able to get the handout because they won't have an extra one. And also, that class is specially filled to the brim. And for us, you know, if we get eight more people, people will be sitting in where they make food. So, you know, we can't really have people moving back and forth. It just makes very chaotic. But we're going to explain what to do if you miss a class down the road. Oh, oh there's more, pla more questions. This is good. Sure. This is weirdly specific, but the mandatory reporter thing, are we a mandatory reporter in our entire lives, or just in our capacity as long as I'm sorry, I'm sorry. She's asking if, if you take the mandatory reporter training of child abuse and neglect, does that mean that you have reported in any of your walks of life or just as a master gardener volunteer? And that's a good question. I think you would want to report it in I'm, I'm any aware, others. So I, I think <laughs> the areas of my life I'm limited in what I can do. Oh. So. Okay, well, you'll have to check into that. I'm sorry, we can't okay. answer that. Um, and it may answer that in the training. It's been two okay. years since I took the training. So it may answer that in and, the training. And I think that I mean, if, you, if you particular in your life, there's certain you know, things you can and cannot do. But the whole point is it's a huge just awareness deal. Yeah. And that's what it is. And, and you know, you see something when you're out and about, especially with master gardeners, they just want to make sure that people know what to do and what, how they should handle it. Oh, we can look into that further if you want. All right. Well, once you look into it, if you want to get back to it. Okay. okay, well, let's move on. 
So the next thing we're going to talk about is volunteer service. And I think all of you are here to learn, but volunteer service is part of that. Um, and you are trained in this class to apply university research-based information, that's a real important thing to us, to public educational programs and projects of the UW Extension. So that's what, volunteer, what we do with volunteer service. That's the purpose of it. Um, the service shouldn't be looked at as a burden. I think a lot of people do come into this class and think, okay, I have to do 24 hours of volunteer service, and I can muddle through that, but I'm really there to learn. I want to learn how to garden better, you know. But we also find that when pe people start getting involved with the volunteer projects, that you learn a lot by doing the volunteer projects, and you become passionate about whatever you're doing, and you learn from the other people that you, you interact with. We've got f over 500 Master Gardener volunteers, and everybody has their own little thing. You know, you can learn from all of them, too. So uh, I hope you don't look at it as a burden and that you enjoy your volunteer service. And the great thing is that you can choose to do whatever you like. We don't require that you select certain things. Anything that is an approved project or approved activity, you can do. So choose what you like to do and what works for you. That should make it less of a burden. Um, and also, you don't have to physically be in the garden. We have people who really aren't able to do a lot of physical gardening anymore, but they love the subject matter. They love learning more about plants. And there are a lot of things you can do that don't involve being in a garden. So we can um, provide something for you to do no matter what. And I think one of the best parts to this meeting fellow master gardeners. And we just found out today that in the Monday class, there was a group that all sat together. No, it was somebody who was here um, helping to greet. And she said the group that she sat with in her master gardener training last year, they meet once a month for dinner ever since then. They've become such good friends. And we hear that kind of thing a lot. So. Uh, you, know, you know, be careful where you sit, I think. Is <laughs> <laughs> ah, anyway, <clears throat> so you'll learn a lot through volunteering. And you meet lots of really nice people. Uh, people do kind of uh, marvel at the fact that everybody's nice. Everybody who's a gardener is nice. Of course they are. They like plants. So you'll meet a lot of really nice people. So you are a master gardener in training, technically that's your name, until you are a certified master gardener. So you get a temporary name tag, and that'll probably be in two weeks you'll get your temporary name tag. And you use that as your official master garden name tag until you become certified and get your highly coveted state of Wisconsin name tag <laughs> that makes you official. Um, and um, we do ask that you always wear your name tag when you're volunteering, especially if you're out in the public eye, so that people know that you're a Master Gardener volunteer and doing some volunteer work. Um, master Gardeners in training can perform many uh, types of service, and um, you can really do anything that comes up, but if it's going to be something where you're going to be answering questions for the general public, we'd like you to be with one of our certified master gardeners at the same time. So you kind of find out the way that we recommend answering the questions. Um, and you will find that you'll be called a lot of things. <laughs> and about five or six years ago, the group took to calling our new master gardeners the newbies. <laughs> Personally, I would rather call you our brand new, excited master gardeners rather than calling you newbies, but you'll hear it. And, uh, you know, otherwise we would call you new master gardeners, and then the other ones would be old master gardeners, and they don't like that term. <laughs> so we don't call anybody an old master gardener. Uh, the, the ones who have been around for a while, we call them seasoned master gardeners. <laughs> that sounds like you're going to have them for dinner, but... <laughs> okay, so what counts for volunteer service? Well, there's literally hundreds of activities that you can do as a master gardener volunteer in these two counties. And you can volunteer in either county. Matters not where you took the training or where you live. You can volunteer anything in either of the two counties. Um, 
we do have a volunteer service policy, and the volunteer service policy, as well as the continuing education policy, is something that we'll hand out to you in a couple weeks, and we'll have a little mini presentation just kind of going over it, so you're, we're sure you understand that. But it is on our website, the SCWMG website, and and showed you what that website is, and it's also on your at a glance sheet. So. Um, and the other place you can find out about what's there to volunteer for is the brand new, first time ever, Volunteer Opportunity Directory. Ooh, you're going to be the first class to receive that. Um, we're getting it ready. We hope it'll be ready in just a couple weeks. And we have really gone to great lengths to try to list as many of the opportunities as we can. And to have the contact person's name, the address of it, what county it's in, a description of it, when they have work days, if they have work days, if not, who to contact to find out how you get about all that stuff is in this little directory. So we're really excited about it. We think it will really help you to choose activities to volunteer at. Okay. So we kind of break down our volunteer service into six different categories, and you know you don't have to memorize these, but you will see these categories again. The timesheet is set up this way too. It's set up in these categories. So we're going to kind of go through them in these categories, and we will start with youth activities and youth gardens. Uh, we have a number of youth gardens, and things are called a youth garden. If it's a garden that our master gardeners are the main caretakers of, we're the ones, our master gardeners are the ones that are planning it, managing it, take, maintaining it, putting educational signage on it. It's one of our gardens, and then other people come to that garden. Maybe youth come, maybe a, the community comes, but that's what we call an approved youth garden. Everything else that you do with kids is a youth activity. It may be happening in a garden, but if it's not in a garden that we're responsible for, then it's a youth activity that just happened to happen in a garden. Okay, we really make that distinction. And we, you'll find out that with reporting on your timesheet, that's where this will come clearer to you and why it's important to us, because we get all of our statistics and all of our information about what you do by those timesheets, and we've laid them out real carefully so that it does it the best we can and makes it easiest for you. Um, then we have approved public gardens, and these gardens too are ones that the SEW Master Gardeners maintain, manage, take sole responsibility for, or lead responsibility for at least. They're approved by UW Extension locally, meaning Anne and I are the final say of which gardens are approved Master Gardener Gardens, and we do have some criteria that we use to determine that. Uh, all of the gardens have to have an educational focus or some educational component. They also have to have at least 50% of their plants labeled. And our Master Gardener organization makes it very easy for them to use the, the Cadillac of labels. You're going to want them for your garden. <laughs> They're stainless steel, and they have these wonderful plates that don't, don't get bad over the winter. And they provide waterproof labels to put on them. So they've really got it down to a science. So there's no excuse not to have them in the garden. Um, and then we also ask that UW Extension or the, and or the Master Gardeners has to be recognized by the organization who owns that property. And also that um, we have some literature there for people who come to the garden or maybe come to the facility, like if it's at a hospital, sometimes the literature's inside. We like to have it outside as well, that kind of thing. But currently there is a moratorium on, on getting new approved gardens, because we do have quite a few. And this isn't all of them, I don't think. I think we have 10 in Milwaukee County. Yeah, 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 it's not all of them. So we do have lots of opportunities for you. And many of these names will found, sound familiar to you, and you might know where a lot of these are. And you can cho choose by where it's located, close to home. You can get there and help regularly or just by topic. If it's a real interesting to be working in a pollinator garden, you can choose a pollinator garden. So lots of different opportunities there for the gardens. And let me see what pictures do we have. None. OK, and I don't have to explain them. <laughs> so then events. We do a lot of events. And at these events, most of the time, we have a table with a, boot, a, a, table with a uh, display. Sometimes we have a very large booth at that 
event, like in the case of the Realtors Home Show, and also at Art and Bloom. And we do a major display every year at the Realtors Home and Garden Show. It's in late March, and it's held at State Fair at the mm -hmm. Expo Center. And Art and Bloom is one that we took on about five or six years ago, and it has really blossomed. <laughs> so we have a lot of master gardeners who now work at that, and they have a schedule of times when you go and staff that booth. And it's very popular. People stop there all the time and ask questions. So the people who organize Art and Bloom have found that it, we are a really good addition to their event. And State Fair is another place where we have a display. We have a huge area, really, a big green space where we have developed a garden. Has anybody been there? So are you shaking your head? Oh, good. Is that where you found out about Master Gardeners? Raise your hand, anybody? Okay, a couple of you. So you're familiar with, you've seen it before, and the picture on the bottom there is our <clears throat> garden chalet. <laughs> it's really called a shed, I think, but <laughs> to us it's our chalet, and we keep all our references and stuff in there so we can answer people's questions, but the garden itself is a large gar garden with lots of different concepts being shown, like shade gardening and butterfly gardening and native plants and composting. So that's a very good place to, to volunteer. And you also get a free ticket to the state fair. <laughs> so that's nice, too. And then we have all kinds of other ones that are more minor than that, where we do just have a table and a display that we set up, and somebody staffs it. Sometimes they're, we're asked to have a little hands-on activity for kids um, as they go through this event. So those are uh, there are quite a few of those. And we will make announcements when we're looking for somebody to help staff one of those tables. Um, we also, uh, the next category is the plant problem assistance, and the people who help directly answer questions for the public, and that's the main thing that they do, are called plant health advisors. They receive additional training in the spring. Anybody can take that training. You'll see an announcement for it. If you think it's something interesting, then join that. Um, it is done in three locations. There is a horticulture helpline at both our Milwaukee <laughs> County office and at the Waukesha County office, and then also at the UW Extension Horticulture Center at Burner Botanical Gardens. We have a, uh, an office, a, a, a space on the lower level, where we have master gardeners staffing it all summer long, five days a week from 10 until 2 to answer people's questions. And sometimes the questions come in by phone. Sometimes they are people who walk in to ask questions. And we also do take emails. So we have an email address for that that people can um, send to. Also, our state extension horticulture website has a place where you can con be asked to be contacted and you could write your question down and then if their county is milwaukee county or waukesha county well if it's milwaukee county it comes to the plant health advisors so we get quite a few questions on email and uh, uh, the people who do it find they learn so much from it it really is one of the best ways to learn um, and if you really enjoy looking things up and finding the answers and the details and, you know, figuring all that out, it's a perfect uh, opportunity for you. And then public presentations. Our group gives about 50 to 60 public presentations a year. All of those groups, like the retired postal workers, and the, what are some of the odd ones that we've had that request presentations on gardening? Um, and they often don't have a topic in mind necessarily. And then we have a list of presentations that are already available that you can take that presentation and you can kind of tweak it so it works for you. And it may be shorter if you don't have that much time for the presentation and all that. So it's very flexible. Um, but it's there and available to get started. Or if there isn't one already, you can create your own. Um, and then let us kind of look it over and maybe help you with it. But all that research time you do toward that presentation, all the preparation you do for any presentation, all that stuff counts for volunteer service. Um, and a lot of people do enjoy giving presentations because they can do some research and share a lot of knowledge. Um, we do 
give you the opportunity to go to do a presentation with a seasoned master gardener so you're not out there alone but uh, you don't have to it's if you want to we can hook you up with somebody else to go and we do offer a speakers workshop in February every year so we kind of give you some pointers on being a speaker and then we tell you some of the logistics of getting the handouts and where the AV equipment is and all that stuff And then the final category is support through service. And that is anything that you do that helps to support or assist um, or provide leadership for the SEW Master Gardeners or the state, the Wisconsin Master Gardener Association or our state program office or anybody in the UW Extension office. So any of the horticulturists, our urban ag program, if they need assistance, and they ask for volunteers, that all counts for volunteer service too. And we have a group of special projects that, um, um, do we talk about that next? Uh, yes, we do, so I'll talk about that when we get to it. Um, <laughs> but the, the support for the Master Gardener volunteers, this is the SEW Master Gardeners, a lot of the hour, hours that go into that are through the plant sale. And have any of you ever been to the plant sale? A couple of you. Um, it's very popular, we, they do very well with it, the plants, none of them are expensive, they're all in pretty good condition, and they have, all the pots are about the same price, I think they're about five dollars a four inch pot, and uh, they do have some larger sizes as well, and they're all plants that have been dug and divided from master gardeners' yards or others of their friends or neighbors. And have any of you heard of jumping worms? Yeah, jumping worms are a problem, but they are right on top of that. What they have done is they have a team of people from the plant sale group that go to a person's house who wants to have people, master gardeners come and dig plants out. They go the fall before and check for jumping worms. Mm -hmm. Because in the spring, you won't be able to see them. They, the adults die over the winter and all that's there are the eggs and they're very hard to see. So they check them in the fall and then they get rid of all of the soil off the roots before they pot them up into commercial potting mix. So um, yeah, I just wanted to address that right away because when you hear that these things are dug out of people's yards, you go, hmm, are getting jumping worms? But they're very, very careful about it. We're doing the best we can with it. Okay. Yeah, that's what well, jumping worms are worms <laughs> that um, are not like our earthworms that we have in our gardens that we're used to. They don't go deep into the soil. They stay very near the surface. And when they're disturbed, or even when they're just among themselves, they flop around and are moving constantly. They're very, very prolific, and you never have just one. You have globs of them. They eat all of the organic matter from the first couple of inches of soil, and they leave the soil looking like coffee grounds. And it's about as nutritious as coffee grounds, too. So the plants growing there suffer eventually. And they're very easy to move from place to place. Um, nobody knows where they first came from in the state of Wisconsin, but the first place that reported it was the UW Arboretum in Madison. And they're pretty sure that they must have come in on some plant material they purchased from out of state. Um, but now we're finding we have, since then, we had reports of them all over the place. So it's not just that one place that came in and then spread. They're all over the place. Um, we were very surprised that a lot of the gardens that they go and look at are, um, do have jumping worms. And, and the homeowner doesn't even know they have them. And we do have a brochure on them. And we will go into that. Yeah. So you'll be able to read up more on it. It's in your, in your and then what's the next question everybody asks is, what can you do about it? Yeah. Absolutely nothing. <gasps> so it's a real scourge when you get them. It is terrible. But they're working on it. Science to the rescue. <laughs> and they are working on it. In fact, this Friday we're going to be listening to a, a teleconference with the state specialist in dumping worms from the DNR. And she is going to update us on the current state of the research and what they're finding might be um, some recommendations they can give. Yeah. I'm just curious how new are they? Um, 
it may say in the brochure, but I think it's probably four years or so. Does it say a year? 2013. 2013. So four years. I was right. Yes. So I bought some words online. If we were red wigglers or composting words, those are okay, right? Yes, the, okay. the red wigglers are okay, but they have found that some providers of red wiggler worms have some of these mixed in. So you do have to be very careful. Okay. They tell you how to distinguish them, and it's <coughs> relatively easy. Um, but red wigglers are pretty busy too. You know, they thrash a lot. And any earthworm, when you disturb, it's going to thrash. But then they settle down. And you may have one, and they dig burrows, but these guys don't do that. So. so we'll talk about that as we go along here. Okay, so how do we get into that? The perennial plant sale. <laughs> so the plant sale is on the third Saturday in May every year. It's at State Fair Park in what was formerly called the DNR area, and now it's Exploratory Park. Um, <laughs> and the great thing is that as a master gardener in training, you get to go to a pre-sale on Friday night at 3 o'clock, Friday afternoon from 3 to 7, and you can get the picket litter <laughs> of the plants. Um, and how can you help? You will get lots of messages from the plant sale committee telling you how you can help. So you can help with all this preparation stuff, and a lot of that can be done but with helping with labels and stuff. It doesn't have to all be in gardens, once again. Um, they call them potathons when you go to somebody's yard and you dig and divide the plants. Um, and then they're set up the whole week before. All these plants that have been dug and divided all around the area get moved into State Fair Park and get set up in alphabetical order by scientific name. And, <laughs> and then on sale day, they have over 100 Master Gardener volunteers who are there to help people, not just shop, but answer their questions too. So we call it the only educational plant sale in the state of Wisconsin. It's our mission, Let's have some education. All right, and then we also have our special projects. And most everything that you would do at Burr Botanical Gardens counts as volunteer service as one of our special projects. You can be a garden assistant working side by side with a horticulturist. You can work at the UW Extension Horticulture Center. And not just as a plant health advisor, we also have a display team who does displays there and at other places. Um, you can be a docent for adults for the uh, for the Friends of Burner Botanical Garden. They do have youth gardening programs. We have a bloom team, and it's a group of master gardeners who are assigned certain perennial beds in the garden, and they go out once a week, every week, all summer long, and they record the stage of bloom of all the plants in those gardens. And they've been doing this for, I think it's 11 or 12 years, and they put it onto a huge spreadsheet, and those spreadsheets can be found on the Friends of Burner Botanical Gardens website. A little known fact to a lot of people. We're trying to do something about that. We're trying to get the word out. What's the objective of that? Um, so that you know what's in bloom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we know what blooms when, and for designers particularly, it can be very important. And you know, home gardener designers as well, so you know what blooms when. And we also, um, but we also have a garden cart that you can take out into the garden. And if you've been to the zoo and they have that little cart, you know, they have the skins on, the skulls and all that stuff. We have bugs and diseases <laughs> and things like that. And literature we can hand out. Um, we also have a group of garden mentors. Because we only have certain approved gardens, there are a lot of garden groups or groups that want to garden, they want to have a garden together, but they don't know how to garden. They don't know very much about it, they don't know where to start or whatever. They want some advice. So our garden mentors are people who go and just work with the group and help to answer their questions and even if they have to do some research, they work with the group to do that. It's not our garden, it's their garden, but we're mentoring them. And then you can be available throughout the season or for years to come. When they need help, they can call on you to come out and help them or just talk over the phone. Um, we also have an invasive species eradication group and they work in our approved gardens to help eradicate invasive plant species. We also have our lifelong gardening committee and this is to help to prolong um, people's ability to garden. 
um, by preventing the injuries to joints and etc., and also to then accommodate problems that people may have with joints, knees, hips, wrists, feet, whatever. And they have the largest collection of accessible or adaptive tools, gardening tools, in the state of Wisconsin. They have a huge collection. Uh, so they use those often to do demonstrations. They also have done videotapes on how to properly use these tools. They're putting together a toolkit of information to start a gardening group in other counties. They're, they've kind of gone statewide. So you might be interested in that. We also have a pollinator group who are studying all of our pollinators and what they pollinate and learning to recognize them. And we have a program called the SEED program, which is an urban gardening program where we have developed gardens of raised beds at, uh, I think it's nine sites around the city as part of a grant. And we work with those groups to teach gardening classes and then to be mentors for them at their garden projects and or to conduct youth gardening programs at those gardens. So you'll see the announcements for that too. And then we have urban agriculture programs, both in Milwaukee and Waukesha County that do all kinds of different things. Um, and so we really have a lot of opportunities for you. Being an evening class like this, I bet a lot of you work during the day and aren't able to volunteer and do things during the day, during the week. Um, so we put together a list of things that you can do in the evenings and on weekends because as you see notices come through It might start to feel like everything's in the daytime But they aren't we have a lot of other things that you can do during the evening during the week I mean uh, during and on weekends and get plenty of volunteer service so. All right so how do you find out about these volunteer opportunities? Well, you're going to get your volunteer opportunity directory. Woohoo! <laughs> so that'll tell you about them. You'll also get email messages, and we call that our list serve. And the list serve we'll talk about later, but it is a, 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 a group email list. And there'll be announcements on there. They announce every week. They send out a calendar of work days at the garden projects. There's the Master Gardener newsletter, which you have a copy of now, and volunteer opportunities are listed in there. And then, of course, on the SEWMG website. And one very important way to find out, one of the first places you can find out, is at our Volunteer Opportunity Fair that's hosted by the SEWMGs, where they showcase 30-plus volunteer projects, and it's mostly for you guys so that you learn what these projects are like. They have displays with photos, and they do a beautiful job on their displays. And you really get a sense of what that garden project is like, or project, not just garden projects. So it's Saturday, January 20th, so get that on your calendar. It's at Burner Botanical Gardens from 9 to 10.30. And then at 11 o'clock, there will be a speaker. And our SEWMG in-house education committee um, finds the speaker, and they have a pre-registration, so you'll have to watch for the notice for pre-registration, and it's just so that they can only fit so many people in the room, and so they have to, you know, make sure that they don't get more than that. You, there is no charge for, for any of that. And, you know, the majority of things that we do, there's no charge for. The courses, yes, but most of the programs, presentations, educational things are free. All right, and we really try not to take ourselves too seriously. <laughs> we have a lot of fun, do a lot of kind of silly things, but we do take one thing very seriously, and that's our food. <laughs> so, uh, are there any questions up to this point? Yes? Where's the extension office here in Walkershaw? Here it is. It's right down the hall. It's right across the hall. <laughs> I can show you where it is at Brickton if you're curious of where it is. And in Milwaukee, we're moving. But we don't know where. <laughs> We've been looking for like nine months to find out where we're going to be. So nobody knows. We'll let you know when we know. Yes, you had a question? Is there anything that um, we can do? Like I work at a garden center during the day. Is there anything that I can wear other than the name tag? Um, to distinguish myself as someone who, when you ask a question, would have information, you know, by the master gardeners. If you are being paid to do the job, you're not allowed to wear your master gardener name tag. You 
can only wear that and present yourself as Master Gardener Volunteer when you're volunteering. So um, there's no other type of designation that you can show no. that you know people would have confidence then to ask you a question or anything? No, I'm afraid not. It's a very strict rule that they have with all the Master Gardener programs throughout the country. Um, and you can't, if you have a business card and have a little business of your own, uh, you can't put on there that you're an SEW or a, a Master Gardener volunteer um, because you're using that to improve and to better your business, so you're using it to make more profit. And that's what they're looking at. And if you're doing it at a volunteer, I mean, at a garden center, then the, the garden center is essentially making money off of that, too. That's the way they look at it. So, sorry about that. Just as volunteers. Any other questions? <laughs> 